Hi again. Uh, welcome to my garage. It's Pierre. Uh, today we're a little bit outside of the machining uh, department and uh, for upcoming projects I've got to uh, harden and tamper metals. Uh, the usual method, method the usual method I employ for that is uh, the torches or uh, you know like a, a propane or a map a torch or whatever or acetylene or and uh, dunking. Uh, I want to be a little bit more thorough since uh, sometimes I can use uh, some some other places uh, oven but I want to make myself a little oven. It's not that hard and uh, today we'll uh, see how uh, how we can manage uh, the simple way to make one and not not very expensive because like uh, what we're going to use and uh, what what is going to be involved with it but, uh, let's go on with the process what i ultimately want to use is this little uh, kiln it's used for uh, copper enamels it's uh, my if you buy it like brand new it's a little bit more expensive but if you get to the um, classified ads and things you can get them for a very like a uh, very low price from fifty dollars to uh, hundred and fifty dollars and sometimes even less and uh, it's made of refractory material uh, all around it's got about uh, a good two inches I guess uh, more like two and a half inches thick uh, I did add a little grate in there Help support the part so they don't lean on the um, on the refractory and this one's got two elements it's working on the household uh, normal plug uh, for uh, America it's 120 volts gives about uh, a little bit over a thousand watts the temperature will eventually get up to uh, 1800 degrees uh, Fahrenheit that's uh, just a short uh, Short of day. I'm not going to show every step of it, but I'm installing the uh, PID switch plug, uh, con you know, SCR controlled uh, control switch, and uh, it seems I already started to uh, make the. Uh, going here and I'm making all the uh, installations of the different components before I do the folding all the folds the uh, corners and everything the lines are already done so this is going to be the front where this goes inside there uh, this is going to be the back uh, not there yet but it's going to be a switch there turn it on and off the different uh, Connection for the different uh, wires in the back, like uh, probe wire, input wire, and uh, it's going to go into a case like this. I previously showed the uh, parts before it was folded and uh, inserted into the uh, the casing. Uh, the temperature probe is temporarily connected there. The 110 volts cable, which will go into the wall outlet, and it's going to be connected. Uh, the the oven is going to be connected in the back of this, which will control the uh, output to the oven, and with this monitor the temperature. I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you the assembly from the top. Uh, the heart of the system is this uh, little controller here exactly the same as the one installed in the front there it's uh, I like these ones it's a my pin it's a TA4 and uh, it's um, pretty uh, pretty well configurable in any uh, in any uh, way you want it and uh, depending upon the probes you're gonna put on them or things like that uh, this little controller is the uh, main key to control this solid state switch here it's a uh, solid uh, solid states which is a uh, you know like uh, SCRs which is controlled by a uh, small voltage coming from the uh, 
the controller here. Let's say uh, I've got this controller from the back. I connect the 110 volts from the line. I connect here the uh, sensor, the sensor probe, and one of those, one pair of those uh, here will be used to uh, send the voltage to the, you know, uh, trying to adjust the temperature in the oven with the feedback from the uh, the probe and once uh, you got the voltage sent here it's insulated by uh, opto uh, electronics um, couplers it will call yeah that was my favorite actor that I hire once in a while in this channel compressor okay this switch here is going to be controlling the uh, voltage coming from the line here going to I just added the switch here um, going to this switch and going to I'm going to plug the oven in the back here and this is going to give the voltage uh, one needed to keep the temperature uh, regulated. I'll connect this to an extension and the, uh, this is going to the uh, wall outlet. Let's put this in and uh, the probe here which I have to be careful and I'm not exactly uh, like I guess it's set up. I want to get the cable strength relief which I didn't have time to go and fetch for uh, holding this cable to the back wall there and I'm going to bring uh, a set of connectors to put the the probe instead of connecting directly to the controller I'll con connect to the back of the case there but it's coming um, I'll temporarily insert the probe in the front here this is a let's say a peak hole to the inside of the oven goes right through and I'll insert the the uh, probe in here. It will monitor the temperature pretty accurately and nicely. Oh, turn on the switch. It says degrees Fahrenheit. I've got a K-type probe, and temperature is set to 250 degrees, and it's 65 degrees uh, now in the oven, and the temperature will start going up. If we can see from uh, the top here, we've got the little, uh, you know, witness light, witness uh, lamp on the uh, switch here that says that's uh, pumping power into the uh, the oven. And if there's a nice feature on this uh, controller, if you want to see here. If I press the set button once, it's going to tell me it's 100% uh, on current on the uh, the switch now. It might vary depending upon what you need to send into the, um, you know, how close you are from the temperature, and uh, if, you know, uh, it will give like a few a few percent to uh, you know like from zero to 100% power available to the uh, to the switch according to what it needs in the how close it is to get uh, to the uh, right temperature. See we're already 120 and coming up. It's This is Fahrenheit degrees. Yeah, it's not very hard to um, set up the uh, temperature at which we need to go. Uh, I want to go now let's say at 1500 degrees Fahrenheit to uh, let's say go for a hardening operation. the 80 button this is flashing and uh, <clears throat> I'm going to skip the column and set it to uh, go to 1500 degrees this is a 5 I need to put a 0 there a switch column I need a oops sorry a 4 and I need there a one. Let's see. Oh, sorry. The uh, I need a five there. So 
1500 degrees, it's easy. Uh, once I'm happy with the settings there, which is going to be my uh, final temperature, uh, press set and it's going to go from the temperature it is now to 1500 degrees. This little oven might take about, uh, I would say, close to a half hour to three quarters of an hour to get there. Uh, once I get there, it's going to be pretty stable and we'll uh, take you back when we get there. There, with a little uh, peek on what it's doing. Yeah, we just attained 1000 degrees and uh, on the goal is 1500 degrees, it's Fahrenheit. And if you want to see how much uh, current it's pumping in, <clears throat> 100%. Ah, it's coming up slowly. We're uh, about 150 degrees or so from the uh, requested temperature. Still working 100%. This has been holding for about uh, over a half hour. It gets to the set temperature and stays there. Just see, we see the uh, the green part here where it says 57-58% uh, uh, current sent to the uh, controller. We see the little, uh, I hope you see the little light blinking on top. The temperature holding very steady. If we're ready to put some uh, material to harden in there, that'd be, uh, that'd be the time. And uh, also to mention for uh, Brian from BC Block uh, 02. Uh, you were kind of interested to know what the outcome would, would be with the uh, electrical um, and electronic combination of the uh, you know the um, the control the uh, uh, the uh, hardening let's say the hardening and eventually a tempering oven uh, I think it's very conclusive about uh, how stable it holds temperature and uh, just how uh, accurate the disc can be so uh, until next uh, episode, uh, we'll see you uh, soon and uh, with no uh, new more uh, interesting material. So just if you want to, if you like, just thumbs up. If you want to uh, see more, you subscribe, and uh, you're always welcome to comment. And uh, I'll be pleased to respond. Thank you very much.